Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Arizona. Just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now. Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Dr. Green Dumb Show.
We all need a little bit of help. <laughs> I need plenty of it, I'll tell you right now. It's the Dr. Green Thumb Show live on YouTube, Twitch, Discord, and the home site, www.bereal.tv. What it do, y'all? Uh, welcoming back to the show at our table, my friend, Freeway Ricky Ross <laughs> up in here. What up, B? Good to see you up in here once again. Man, good to be here with all the fellas. That's right. We got Psycho Less in the building. Cheers. You're matching the red cup today. Yeah. <laughs> I just happen to have work out. It's a hey, you're matching, son. The match game is it's good. on hit. Salud. Uh, we got uh, the THC squad, the Treehouse crew up in the building, both the Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. Yo, yo, what up? We can't complain. We doing good. I know you can. And out of the nest, the third baseman, Trace Noons. Back on the bags. Back yeah. on the bag. Put your ass on third base there today. There you go. Huh? I play all the positions. All right. <laughs> Utility player. All right. And we got the Brosha himself, Send Dog. Right there, in the place to be, without a doubt. What up? How you guys doing, man? Um, I want to congratulate you on the opening of uh, your cannabis dispensary th this Friday, right? Yeah, Popping grand it off opening, this grand opening, man. You I'm, did a soft launch recently. did a soft launch. You know, I, I never ran a dispensary before. You know, all my all mine was on the street. So yes. we had to get all the bugs out and everything. But, you know, unreal, man. It's like a dream come true, you know, to... Um, Cause you know when you're on the streets, you out there on these streets, you you really trying to get off the streets, you right? Know, like, I mean, it, it baffles me, you know, when I see some people who are off the street trying to get on, but yeah, with, with me, Going I backwards, was, <laughs> I was always trying to get off them streets, man. I knew them streets was rough, um, it's tough out there, you know. Everything goes when you're on them streets, you know, and um, to now to finally, you know, have, I mean, really. Cause, cause I understand you. I'm, I'm really a, a, an employee of the state of California. If, if you really look at it the correct way, because you know the governor had to sign off. The True. mayor had to sign off. So you, you still we're all employees. Yeah, you're still an employee. But True that to have an opportunity where you can, um, wow, just grow it as big as you want to, or stop when you get ready is, is I don't know. It's, 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 it's mind boggling for me to finally get a, a job, and uh. You know, it's, it's selling marijuana. Yeah, in California, legal. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> the most it, important part. <laughs> is that surreal for you now at this point, like uh, in your life, to look back at it, where you come from, where you came from, what you used to do, to where it's at now, where literally on Instagram, it's you know, it used to be before. Never let them know your business. Now it's you gotta let them know your business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, and for me, it, you know, because I was the type of guy that like, if you'd have took a picture of me, I would, I would have probably Mike Tyson them back in the day. You know, right, snatch right. the camera out the hand, threw it on the ground. So, <laughs> but to now be where you gotta do that. Right, you, you have know? to be the face of it. You have to be the face of it. You know, and and people. Uh, I, I even have people come up to me sometimes and say, "Oh, you 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 just like taking pictures." I'm like, "No, nah, this is my job." You know marketing, what I'm saying? promoting. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't have a choice. You know, these are the people who who pay my bills. Right. You know, these are the people that's gonna make sure that my shop do well. So I have to uh, literally do almost anything they they need me to do. You know, along within 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 reason. Yeah, man. Um, the 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 nature of of opening up a dispensary. It's a, it's quite an undertaking, right? Oh my I mean, goodness! You, uh, like I could relate. I thought it was gonna be simple. <laughs> yeah, no. You know all the things that it takes to open on day oh, one. Oh my goodness! You know, um, you know, I, I had a couple trap shops, right? You know, back in the day, you know, when I first got out of well, when I first got started in in, in cannabis. And I, I, I did not have cannabis in my coming home plan. That was not right. part of my plan to be selling cannabis. But, did it uh, shock you of, of the possibilities that, that, that were happening? It did. I was in Texas, right? Yeah. You know, I'm, in, I'm in Texas, so we're not getting any L.A. news. Yeah, you uh, ain't seeing nothing. I'm not seeing nothing. I do not know marijuana is legal. So you didn't know? No, like, I didn't know. At all? You had no communication no for anybody to say, hey, you know what happened in Cali? <laughs> no, none, none. I mean. Damn, that must have been like a culture shock to you. Uh, when so, I got out and, and, and I'm seeing these signs and I'm like, what is that then? Oh, that's a, that's a marijuana spot. A marijuana spot right there. on the right. It was like visiting the planet for the first <laughs> time, yeah? <laughs> 
And, and when I saw it, you know, the first thing came to my mind, when I get off parole, I'm going to get me one. Because I knew I couldn't do it while I was on parole. You know, federally, it's still illegal. Um, and, and, you know, I had to P.O. from hell. That motherfucker was, he tried to send me back because guys was calling me from prison. And um, somebody snitched on me, SIS, called and told him, hey, man, that dude's taking like 300 phone calls every month from prison. And uh, called me into the judge and you know, tried to send me back for that. Hmm. Well, fortunately, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had a good judge. She was cool. Um, after all the things we had been through, you know, um, I mean, we we grew up together, you know. Uh, yeah. When 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 I first met her, um, hair was jet black. Last time I went and seen her, her hair was gray in mine because I still got a little black in mine. She didn't have right. no black in her hair no more. So it's all gone. It's all gone. So uh, we we got to know each other really really well. Uh, we had some great conversations, you know, some that I didn't like, you know. Right. And I'm sure that I said some things to her that she wasn't real fond of. But at the end of the day, uh, we, we got to know each other, you know, that relationship. Began. And she understood, you know, who you were at that point. Like, yeah, yeah, that he ain't going to just lay down. He, he, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He going to fight. He going to fight for his. Well, what's oh, cool God. is that you, you had a vision, like, off top when you came out. You said, I'm going to have one of those one of these times, yeah. one of these days. And, yeah. and you saw it through because it, to me, it's all about what you tell yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be doing that. If and, you don't, if you don't, you, you, you I, I mean, that's almost like having a plan. Right. You know, and um, it's like I, manifesting. What what I, manifesting is absolutely correct. And what I found out about business is that without a plan, you really plan to fail. You right. Know, you you got to be able to uh, map out your moves, what you plan on doing and uh, without that, you're in trouble. Yeah, and you got to have the right team actually to to execute the things it takes to get to that point. Oh yeah, without my team, I, I would not be where I'm at. I mean, no, no, because yeah. nobody could do They'd it. They trip me up three or four times. I where I'm at. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm I'll, tumbling. Because I'll tell you what, not one person can do it all themselves. They just can't. Not in any business, especially not this cannabis shit. Well, know, with the cannabis can't. business, there's so many different aspects from the legal aspects. I mean, you're not an attorney. You don't know, you know, what no. you can and you know what what needs to be drawn up. So there's so many different aspects that you have to lean on people. I was getting, I was already getting a suit made. I was gonna get a a, a suit made for myself that looks like a bud. A marijuana. I was going to have it custom made and I was going to literally go out on the street and hand out flyers on the street. Right. And I'm, I'm going to talk to the people about making the costume and everything. And my, but my, my, my manager was like, Oh, you can't be handing out flyers like that there. You can't wear no bud uniform in the middle of this. <laughs> Not you. Someone else could do that. No, I would have did it. I know I, you would have. I wanted to do it. I know you would <laughs> But he didn't want you to do it. No, she was saying that oh, she you didn't. can't do it as a, as a, nobody can even represent our license and do that. Oh, right? le legally, you're legally, you legally, you could not do that. <clears throat> no, legally, you can't do it. See? They want you to pay for a billboard. Yes. They want you to pay 20 racks a month or whatever it is, what ungodly number that is. For, for a billboard, because guess what? They get their cut out of that. For sure. Him being out there passing out flyers in the logo or whatever it is, they don't, you know. They don't get a cut. They don't, <laughs> yeah. Even to the city. They police, don't get paid for that. Yeah, putting signage up to the city, there's going to be a fee for that. We're not so. going to let you free promo yeah, your no. own shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tax, we don't want, tax, uh, tax. We don't want your we don't want your business to do well, but but and but they gotta understand the, the better the businesses do, the more taxes they get to collect. Exactly. Exactly. There it is. You know. And it's crazy that they tax us what they tax us. I mean, we we got some of the highest taxes. Especially in the cannabis industry, it's I mean thirty eight percent or something like that right now. I mean when you when you break down, I'll use the term an eighth of an ounce of weed, when you break down that sixty dollars, what it's taken out, what is taken out, the city, the state, the you know, what all the different taxations and stuff, that pie gets divided up into a lot of small pieces. You know, at the end of the day, as an operator and as an owner, uh, that percentage, you're working on some pretty tight margins. These aren't what a lot of people think is the marijuana business. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I, that, would that change from state to state, or is it the same all the way across the board as far as in states where it's legal at? They all got their different um, tax percentages, man. Nothing is, is uh, aligned with anything. All these states are running their own program. And that's probably part of the problem, especially when you're operating as a multi-state operator, meaning 
have my shops here and my, you know, if I'm growing, if I'm, if I'm putting out products and I also want to put them out in another state, well, their regulations and everything, you know, that it takes to operate in that region is different than what it is here. So now you, you might be able to put your brand out this way, having it with the bag and all this other, you know, all the bells and whistles to promote market and promote, but this state, like let's just say Florida, they don't want pictures on the cover. They just want the name of the brand and maybe the name of the strain and the percentages. And, you know, like how can you effectively operate and, and build a brand when you have to change it from state to state because of the different regulations that exist? You know what I mean? As, right. as if you're a multi-state operator, if you're just staying in one place, then you get the formula of that and you run it and you deal with it. You know what I mean? But you got other hoops to jump through when you're trying to create a national brand, you know, like let's say us or cookies or whoever, Stizzy, they got to, everybody got to jump through different hoops when they go to these different states. There's not one particular get down. Like if they, you know, legalization becomes a national thing and you could, you know, put out your brand like Coca-Cola does. Coca-Cola looks the same in every goddamn state. When you go overseas, it looks the same. There's no adjustment on the brand for sake of whatever regulations that happen in that region. Till it gets like that, we got to do all this bullshit. So it really has got to become uh, legalized. Each state national. is almost a different company. Actually, yeah. Well, you got to run your company a slightly different way yeah. in each state. You know what I mean? Yeah. So right now, as it stands right now, because you know, hey, the 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 people that are within the state that operate the industry of, hey, man, you know, getting their wheels greased <laughs> till the feds step in and say, no, 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 we get our wheels greased, y'all, y'all back fall up. back, fall back. So you know, it's that's why there's a taxation somewhere else that's slight lower than ours. And so on and so forth. We're both, we're probably the highest taxed of all the cannabis. Yeah, that's what I heard. We're the highest. Taxed. I've heard it in the industry, different people uh, in different states uh, saying, um, you know, it's easier to do business with so-and-so state than it is with so-and-so state, you know, compliant and things like that. So th that's where you're going to see people bouncing around until it be, like he's saying, something becomes a, a national rule. I think they, they were saying Oklahoma was probably the easiest state to work with. You know, if you had $2,500, you could get a dispensary in Arizona. I mean, in, in Oklahoma. So, uh, But they were they were everywhere. You know, last time I went down yeah. there. Uh, I was oversaturated. Going, way oversaturated. $2,500? Twenty five hundred dollars, you 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 could get a license in there. I mean, in Oklahoma, you know, they they want to get people in Tulsa rocking because the neighboring state will just come right over and buy cannabis and then go back over to the state. Well, you know, we me and one of my partners, we was looking for a, a location right next to the Texas border. Yeah, <laughs> we was definitely looking to do the same thing. Um, yeah, that's the in, in Tulsa, a lot of people from Texas come over. Buy, buy whatever legal weed there and then go back over and take their chances on getting home. With yeah, as long as Texas is illegal, they're going to do it. Yeah. And that's what, what, that's what kills what, me about these illegal states is that you're illegal, but now you're surrounded by marijuana states. And know? they're making your money. They're making your money. Because there's a stoner culture in Texas. Oh, big, big, big. Big, big. And if you were to open it up, it's the new oil for y'all. Right. Absolutely. I would Absolutely. say. Absolutely. You know. I did a vegan festival down there, and, and everybody at the festival was smoking. So I yeah. think the problem with Texas is it's still kind of, you know, a good old boy state. where old, still a, Or you know, old money still exactly. raining down there. And until the changing of the guards kind of take place down there, you know, those boys down there, they got a pretty good hold on it um, with the liquor business and things like that where, you know, the, the, I'm not so sure about this marijuana thing. But there will, I believe in time, there will come a time. I, I believe so too. I think yeah, Texas. yeah. Everybody, everybody, Florida did. Yeah, I mean, when you think about Florida, they were a zero tolerance state. They were dealing with the, the 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 you know cocaine wars, if you will, and so they clamped down shit over there for a minute. I mean, you know, you were lucky if you even got a hip hop concert down <laughs> right, there, yeah, because <laughs> they were just trying not to have anything happen down there, right? Um, and then they opened up. I mean, Florida became one of those states where it's like, okay, we're embracing cannabis now. 
And that's something I never thought I'd see, you know, mm. not Florida. And if Florida can open up, Texas can open up. Yeah, the telltale, I believe, is going to be what is known as the Bible Belt in the South, but it's also, like I say, known as the Bourbon Belt. And people don't realize that the bumping of heads that takes place with the liquor business and the cannabis business. The last thing Jack Daniels wants in the South and Jim Beam want Liquor-wise, is marijuana to come in here as an alternative. And probably the tobacco companies as well. 100%. Philip Morris and those guys, without mentioning names, those those guys? Yeah. Last thing they want. Word. But when you're talking about places like Mississippi, Alabama, you know, <laughs> you talk about some really, really rural towns, I would have thought that, that everybody would have went before Alabama. Well, you'd think that would be the case because of, the, yeah. of those states being so cash-strapped that they are. Yeah, a lot, a lot of states need money. Right. It, it, but, yeah, Alabama's a surprise right? <laughs> I mean, when you think about it. But, hey, there's weed heads everywhere, everywhere. in the United States and around the world. There just yeah. is. We had a chance to see that. I mean, touring for 30 years, we know that the cannabis culture is global. It's not regional to one particular continent or another. You know what I'm saying? People smoke weed everywhere now. I mean, they've been smoking weed. It's just that you can now see it because of the platforms that exist. You know what I'm saying? You know, people not being so scared to show it now, depending on where they live, obviously, because still there are some place, places, you know, in the dark ages with this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Let me ask you something. Who Who is it up to? For a state to to legalize weed, like is it is it the people? Is it? It should be the people. It should be the people. I mean, most places where it got decriminalized or or legalized is because it got on the ballot or or you know through it becoming legislation, and people have to go out and get signatures for that, like what a hundred thousand or something like that. Texas to get something make that on happen. Yeah, but still, at the end, it's got to get voted on, right by. Um, who, who votes on that? Is, the, is it the city council or is it the it's stu- state? State. It's yeah. State. yeah, it's the state. It kind of yeah. works. The governor, the governor and 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 uh, whoever state else. State senators. Vote, state senators, they vote on whether they're going to pass the legislation, even if the people wanted it or not. If it benefits the state, most likely, it's most, most likely in tax revenue, if it benefits the state, they're going to push it through as long as it doesn't risk anybody's seating like with um religious type voters and conservative voters texas religious come on yeah well that's how it usually goes i mean you know they they know there's money in it but is it going to risk them their seat of power to get in that because you know eventually people are like well hey this guy voted to legalize cannabis we can't have that yeah and in some parts of texas you can't even drink you know and 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 i think all over on sundays you can't buy like alcohol would you I say think they enjoy arresting people, getting money that way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Would mean, you say that there's also money? There's there's money in Canada, but there's also money in, in, against it. Yes. So always to keep their stance on it being illegal, in, like in Texas, for right now. Yeah. For right now, till you know they figure out how the 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 ones who can really benefit from it and like wash everybody out. I mean, because there is that. Um. <laughs> When when the corporate money comes in, you know, usually those corporations are locked in with some of these politicians to make it easier for them to make money, and then they get their little piece of it. We know how the game works. The lobbyists. The they lobbyists. call them lobbyists. Yeah, the lobbyists. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we went through that. Like, we had to hire lobbyists when we were working here uh, for the social equity stuff. We had to get a lobbyist to push the movement through and, and go out and talk to certain uh, representatives about the issues that we that we wanted and and that's the problem. A lot of the people don't get into uh, what's going on. You know, like the I got friends. Yeah, I got friends in Texas right now, and they call me, man. When you think we gonna go? I say, when you start pushing them. Yeah. When you start pushing your representatives to do what you want them to do. When you let them know what you feel and how you feel, because a lot of times the reps is gonna go with what they feel, and you don't know what you know where they come from. They might have been one who who only hit the joint. He didn't inhale it. You know, he might just. Sucked it a little bit, but puff, puffed it out before you inhale. So. Yeah, really, it's it's like when if you wait on politicians, usually they're not going to put you know they're not going to take the first step because they want to check the temperature of that move. Yes, they want to see how many people are for it 
and how many are against it. If there's more people against than four or even equal, chances are they're not even moving. But if they know that the majority are down with it, then they might push it through because they know that they could, you know, make money from it. They, you know, they could benefit from it. But something that's half and half, there's always going to be the people fighting against the money, against the movement. I mean, so usually when it gets pushed through, it's usually because the majority was like, yeah, we want this. And it's got to make sense on the bottom line, too. The yeah. almighty dollar is truly the, probably the first deciding factor. True that. It, uh, it's also your birthday on Friday <laughs> what? when you're doing the grand opening. So happy birthday. Yeah. For that. Hey, you know, I mean, this all this hit so, 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 so close, you know, it's like, we we opened up December, I think the seventeenth, and then it was like, well, let's take a couple of days, let's take a week or two, and 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 then we'll do the grand opening. And I was like, well, if we're gonna wait two weeks. We might as well just wait four weeks and do it on my birthday, and I'll just consider this my birthday present. What a what a it's great a birthday present, you know what I'm Hell saying? Hell yeah! Um, awesome. So we agreed, and then uh, after I did that, I get a call from uh, Chico, my crimey, who who I went to jail with, and he was like, man. I know you're doing your grand opening. Let me do the after party. Also, we do your birthday all at the same time. So, boom. It's going to be a celebration. Yeah, yeah. Then he hit me up a couple of days ago. and was like, man, you don't mind if Warren G come out and perform? I said, hell no, man. I fuck with Warren. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we trying to get Warren in the smoke box. Come on, Warren. We waiting on you, baby. Um, Man, we won't even ask how young you are. Because, you know, we don't. I'll tell you. I, you know, I ain't tripping on that. You know. All right. How young? How young? 64. What? 64. Don't even look it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very young 64. And, and by the way, I know they all saw the bag. We, we, we've we been giving away a gift bag, right? If you come in and spend 170 bucks, it's this big gift bag worth about 500 bucks. <laughs> so you got to spend 170 bucks, then you get the gift bag for $1. The thing went That's viral. Just, oh, of course. But what we did for the birthday, we're going to give away 64 for the first 64 people to come in and spend 170 bucks, you get that bag. Awesome. Nice, and uh, you also got a, a a brand rolling out with yeah. with the store, right? Freeway, yeah. Freeway Ricky, right? Yeah, the, but that's the name of the store. the The brand is L A Kingpin. Oh, L A Kingpin. L A Kingpin. That's a dope yeah. name for the brand. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations well. on that, man. <laughs> man, I just you know you know B since I've been home, man, it, it's just been like you, you know people don't. I, I see people out here on the streets, and I be like, "Wow, they don't get how valuable and how precious this life is, man. Uh, how we sometimes we'll squander our time, yeah, and we'll waste time about stuff that's really fruitless, you know. And when you lose that opportunity to have that life, and you get it back, it's like." Oh my goodness! You appreciate it on a different level. On a different level, man. Like, do you really look at it like a second chance? Is that how you looking at it? Like this is a second go around, and I'm gonna do it. I don't even know if I look at it like a second chance, man. It's like unbelievable, you know, to um, <clears throat> to to be sitting in prison, and they say you're never coming home. They yeah, put for, that in the newspaper. Yeah, for my, what you thought was life. Yeah. Yeah, and they put it in the newspaper never. Never coming home. Life sentence without the possibility of parole. So when you, um, when you're facing that, it, it's it's scary. Yeah, man. It, it's it's a lot on the soul <laughs> to be dealing with, to to deal with that kind of information and and be having to live that. Yeah, yeah. Every day. I don't think it was it was a second chance. You know, I think it, it was already lined up for you, man. Yeah. So here it is. I'm going to make the best of it. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, look, here's here's the thing, right? What people can draw from it is, like, how you went from, the, you know, what you were doing previously to now rocking this, just turning it all around. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's it's a, it's a testament to the human spirit on, like, you know, how you could change things around. Yeah, yeah. And that's inspirational to people, like, man, you know, because some of us had have led some pretty grimy-ass <laughs> lives <laughs> before, no. before, before becoming successful in anything they might have done, whether it's entertainment or other things, man. And not everybody can 
can flip it, man. You know, once you go down, sometimes people stay down. And to see you come back up and have a plan and then executing the plan, man, that's that's awesome. Man, you know, I was thinking a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, when I, when I went in prison, I taught myself how to read while I was there. I read over 300 books. So when I got out, I was like, you got a great plan. You got everything you need. The only thing that's stopping you now is you don't have no money. Yeah. And now I got the dispensary, which is going to um, eventually put the money that, that I've been needing to uh, execute some of my plans that I really had while I was in prison. Um, because it's hard out here to, to execute a plan with no money. Yeah. You know, they, they when you go and talk to these people, they want some money, you know. You got a record you want to get uh, put on the radio, they're going to want some money. So everything that we do out here, we're going to need some some money to back us. And now, um, you know, I have those resources at my at my disposal. Hey, man. Um, it's, it's, it's great to see you doing this, man. Man, I'm glad. I'm, say. I'm, I'm glad to have the support, you know, because uh, we've been doing some fairly decent numbers already, you know, for a soft opening. And, you know, I got to give that credit to, uh, people like you guys who who've been showing me so much love and 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 pushing me forward and and you know just you know I mean I mean you you never know what push you know was the one that got him across the line yeah <laughs> yeah yeah hey I'll, I'll say this it's something you said earlier you know like when we first came on how you know you see these kids like sort of squandering like the the opportunities and 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 not appreciating the life like it it speaks to like you see how you were talking about like there was we were looking for ways to get out yeah not to bring it with us and you see that in in a lot of what's what's happening in hip hop where it's like you know cats ain't like necessarily wanting to leave they're bringing that shit with them are going to get it some of them yeah. go some of them wasn't even with that, never. Yeah. But they get the money and then go and bring that to them. Totally yeah. backwards. Totally backwards. And it's like they don't realize that they're putting bigger targets on their back and making it harder for themselves. And I think when they get older, they might realize that. But right now, as they're If they living, get older. If they get older. You know, for for, 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 for like with me, you know, when I, I can remember when I never thought I'd be 24 years old. You know, I yeah. didn't know if I would make it to 24 years old because... You know, in the hood, dudes was getting killed, 17, 18. True that. You know, 19 Real. years old, you know. So when you're out there and you're living that life, you're wondering, can you make it? Yeah. And you got to see yourself making it because if you don't. But, I mean, you always question. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you're out there on the streets, whether you were banging or you were slanging or any, or, or both, hustling, whatever, I mean, that, that was always on your mentality. Like, survival, one. And how long am I going to be lasting in this? Yeah, you know then I mean? you're going to prison. You got you. You know that's just. I mean, it ain't as bad as getting killed, but it, it's 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 the next. Killing it's the next so, one. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this: When you were a youngster doing what you were doing in those days, did you ever have the mindset as a young kid, early twenties, thinking to myself, "Man, I got to start thinking about like my, my future. I need to start putting something away. I need to do this." Did you ever think that way, or was it oh, just? I, I, Kind of in the moment. I, I was I was putting away, you know, when when I was coming up, everybody's buy real estate, buy real estate. That's how you put away. You know, yeah. that's that's what I was taught to put away. So so absolutely, uh, I thought about putting it away. But um, when when I first got thought, I, I I thought cocaine was going to be my my career forever. You know? like, what else What else am I going to do? You, you know? felt like you were stuck in it. What else could I do? Yeah, you know, I couldn't read, couldn't write, had no skills. You know, and, and here I found something that um, didn't discriminate. You know, yeah. you can get as big as you want to get. You know, nobody is saying, you know, you can't grow. You know, if you can stack the money up, they're going to sell you the cocaine. You know, so um, for me, it it, 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 it it seemed like, I mean, a blessing from heaven. You know, I was I was giving God the credit. Yeah. Like, it's, thank, it's it's hard thank to you God, you it's know. hard to quit something when you're making so much money off it too. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, and, and and not just the money, but nobody is telling you to quit. Yeah, they nobody don't you, they don't want you to quit at that point. Yeah, and, and they don't really have a you know, it's it's like who tells the man to quit? 
You know, who you know walk up to the man and be like, man, you the man. You quit being the man. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Can't do that. No. They don't do it. You yeah, know, no. most people is kissing his ass, you know, yes man in and 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 uh you know, I'm I'm going through a little thing right now with 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 a situation like that that uh that I got to make some moves because what the dude is doing, he's doing some fucked up shit in the hood. Yeah. And um it shouldn't be happening, you know. So somebody got to step up. So I find out about it, you know, I'm going to have to step up to the plate and 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 bring it to the attention. Of, of the players, like, look, man, y'all can't allow this to be happening like this here. Yeah, accountability. Yeah, which a lot of a lot of people don't have <laughs> these days, man. But you know, when we was in the hood, we always had accountability. You know, we held everybody was was yeah. accountable. That's you right. Know, where nobody just randomly going through the hood doing nothing, and, and nobody would 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 bring him up on it. Like, Stakes were higher back then, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Stakes were much higher. Um. But man, it's 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 a uh, it's good to see that you know you transitioned into something. Oh, be it ain't even got different. started yet, man. Yeah, but I it, mean, you know, this shit finna this shit finna be so crazy, man. I I just I just sit here and I'll be like, do y'all know what y'all done did? Do y'all do y'all really know what y'all done did? Y'all done, <laughs> y'all done gave me a license. I I see it because I, I say it because I see it. Yeah, and I know yeah. you're st- strategic about how you do things. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And uh, I can't wait to 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 see what it becomes, man. Man, it's gonna be you. it's gonna be crazy, let, man. Let me ask you this: like, obviously, the lifestyle that you were living is well represented in hip hop music. Yes. Like people talk about it, people referenced you left and right. People that didn't even know you took my name. Yeah, well, <laughs> that too. <laughs> that part too. Um, who do, who do you felt? Who do you feel like had the best representation of your lifestyle? As a, as a rapper? Yeah, in, in hip-hop. <laughs> it, it doesn't necessarily have to be one. It could be like a few. And, you know, Master Spade, you know, when he when he yeah. did the old gray-haired granny. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was dope. That was dope. I love that song. I was like, I'm glad he didn't mention my damn name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was talking about it early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was way ahead of you. Yeah. Go to the dope man, you get an eight track. You spend three hundred dollars, you get nine hundred back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he was about the shits. Yeah, Tell yeah, you. man. We miss Spade. Yeah, I uh, feel like he was like you know the first Nate dog because he was like sort of he was singing. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mix, mix master Spade. Oh yeah, man. Anybody else? Um. So many of Mob D, they they did a track uh, one time and 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 you know, and called my name out above the law. Cube done did some stuff, yeah, that I knew he got from me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he he didn't he didn't mention he didn't mention the name right. or nothing like that there. But I knew that that was part of my story. That some stuff I gave him to to look over. Did you ever think that that you were gonna be have an influence like that? No, never, never. I thought I hid, you know. I, yeah, I, yeah. You were low key. I don't, I don't want nobody to know me. Just give me the money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's give right. me the bag. Y'all keep all the others. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. Keep the accolades and the praise. Yeah, yeah. Just, just bring get, the bag. Just bring the bag. Leave the bag over there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go on about your business. Let me ask you something. When, when's the movie coming out? Man, I got a Ricky call. Ricky Ross movie. I got a call two days ago. Documentary, bi- bi- uh, biopic, or? It's a motion picture. Ooh, motion picture? Wow. They should. We got a doc coming out on VH1 right now. It's already shot on crime, true crime stories. But it's here. They said two days ago, like, you ready? I was like. You got I'm be. ready when y'all ready. You got to be ready. They got to be ready. Look, if they did the white boy Rick story, man, they got to do the freeway Ricky story. Man, I, I watch these people do so much bullshit, man. Like, how the fuck y'all do that shit, man? <laughs> how the fuck you do that? And you got the real motherfucker sitting here. Yeah. You're going to do some shit called Snowfall, man. Yeah. And then you name the fucking guy Franklin, and, and you could have told the real story. But <clears throat> all of that just lines me up to do your thing my thing really? like you know, straight like it's supposed to be like it's supposed to be and and i think i think when 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 people get the the whole story it's gonna be kind of cleansing for the whole country yeah you know what i'm saying because because sometimes you can be polluted 
and and you don't even know you polluted. You don't even know why you polluted. You just polluted. Right. And then something comes along, and you say, holy shit, this is why. This is why. All this shit was happening. This is why this is that way, and 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 it's cleansing. Do you think that that doing this movie is going to be an opportunity for you to do that to to literally like use the term tell your story correctly, Absol- correctly, ab- ab- absolutely, 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 redemption a little bit. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if 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 I'm looking for redemption. Just you to know, tell the story, though. Just to tell the story. I I redeem myself every day. You know, every day that I walk, wake up. And I walk down the street and I see somebody and and I say, hey, how you doing, man? How you doing, miss? That's a redemption. Because just to speak to somebody, you lift them up. You know, sometimes people just need just a kind word. You know, you, you ain't got to say much. Just 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 something and you touch them. And then now it's gotten to the point to where when, when I say it to people, it means a whole lot to them. I can see them like just perk, you know, and, and, and those type of situations for me is priceless. A random act of kindness. A type random type. act of kindness. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that works. I mean, that, you know, like that, that lifts your karma up, you know, so much because you're right. You know, some people just need that, that, that moment from someone that, that mm-hmm. they may not get from anywhere. And just that hello or well, most how you people doing. don't have the time. Yeah. yeah, they don't have the time. Or they're afraid to approach someone or Both. like or they or they don't got the time. Like they don't just they don't care. Yeah, we don't I don't, I don't fuck with them. Yeah. You know, who is that? But it's with exactly. me I, I believe that every single person on this planet is important to the planet. You know. Um we all need it. We need each other. Um whether we like each other or not, we need each other. We function together, and we should look into bringing us together and enjoy the short time that we that we're gonna be on this planet. Because I'm talking about seventy years, eighty years, that's a short time. Facts. Yep. We're all one. Yep. It doesn't matter where you come from. We're all one. We're human beings. You know what I'm saying? And you're right. You know that that's. We got to appreciate each other. We would have more power if we all came together. True that. Absolutely. Especially when it seems in today's world so many certain small amount of individuals are trying to separate all of us, it seems. Yeah. We're we're the true power, like you just said, Les. If we were all together and banned as as an army together as the the people. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Hey, let me ask you this. Random but relevant to your story. If you would have had the technology that exists today, how long you think your run would have would have been? Short. Short. My problem, the police couldn't figure out what I looked like. But these days. Oh, no. Pictures. Yeah. It's over. Yeah, you were in an analog <laughs> world back then. They'd have been bang, bang, yeah. bang, bang, bang. Yeah. yeah. I'd have been snatching everybody's camera. Who took that picture? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, like, they, they couldn't figure you out for a long time. No, it took them a long time. A lot of my friends got harassed. You know, because they was me and got taken down to the station and fingerprinted and just, you know, took through the whole process because they thought they were who they were me. Well, the one thing, you know, some of us knew about you was that you weren't flashy. So, like, you could, like, you didn't stick out like a sore thumb. I didn't have no car that they could be. Yeah. Oh, he's coming in that red bed. <laughs> 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 Look for the blue Porsche, the, bl- the black bands, the big black bands, the, 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 the shiny one, the only one in the neighborhood. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't do none of that. Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't want none of that. Let me have me, give me an old bucket. You know what I'm saying? To run good. Bicycle. Start whenever I turn the key. <laughs> that's all I needed. Brake lights hey. work. Turn signals worked. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> what, were, what were you listening to in those times? What was the music you was listening to in those times? Man, I was, I, I always been on kind of like the oldies, stylistics, oldies. you know. Like yeah. Stylistics. Um, old stations. Barry White. I was listening to some Barry White last night, man. Uh, I, I, and I just started back listening to music just recently. You know, when I got out of prison, I, I was on this, like, this, 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 this sure. hell week. You know, like, you know, when you play football, they do the hell week and just work, 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 work. So, you know, i just been bussing for 14 years now, man. I've been out here bussing. And it's been to come to the light, too. I'm glad, you know, that that all my work is starting to um, surface to the top. You yeah. Know? Um, a lot of times you put in a lot of work and nobody can see it. Um, 
but you just got to keep going. Don't worry about what everybody else sees. Just do it because you do it. And um, it's just just a beautiful thing, man, to 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 be able to um, go to where I've been, man, to be sitting in a a, a concrete cell um, with thirty five or forty guys, and to now, you know, have a store. You know, twenty minutes from downtown LA that has the capability of making a hundred thousand dollars a day if you do it right. Yeah, that's right. That's the only way I'm gonna do it. I know. I, if I can't do it right, I don't want to do well, it. Well, I, I know you're gonna do it right. <laughs> if anybody can. Yeah, I ain't gonna do it if I can't do it right. You know, I, that's why I went out. I got, I got a great staff. I mean, I feel, I feel so comfortable. This is the greatest team I ever worked with in my whole life. I've never had a good team. That's what's up. You know, when 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 I used to go to the games, I'd have to score all the points, uh, bring the ball down, throw the ball to yourself. <laughs> Man. You know, now I got a team, you know, where You don't gotta do everything. I don't have to do everything. You yeah. know, I can I can depend on some people who are gonna be at work on time. The door's gonna get opened up. And um it's just a wonderful feeling, man. I, I, I it's it's hard to describe, you know, um how I'm feeling right now, but I'm overwhelmed, and uh, you know I hope I hope people come out on 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 uh, Friday and and um, celebrate the grand opening with me as well as the all white party. You know we we gonna throw down, man. We are gonna have some fun. Uh, don't be surprised though if you get there late if you can't get in the door. What's don't, the what's the address at that uh, location? The dispensary is nine zero seven four Dejermo uh, D E G A R M O Sun Valley California. You j- you started you also started a boxing team, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boxing the same way, man. You always had a love for boxing? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. I just saw an opportunity. Okay. You know, um I started going around working with a couple guys and um I didn't think that the, the system was treating the boxers the way um that they should. They, they never should be do. getting treated. Yeah. You know? I mean, then it's almost like the weed business, man. You know, stankless. The growers, to me, to me, the growers is one of the most important pieces to this puzzle, and and yeah. I think right now they're getting beat up worse yeah. than anybody. The farmer, the farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The farmer, right? <laughs> Grower, farmer. It's the yeah. same. Same guy. Yeah, yeah cultivator. Yeah. So, right. So it's the same thing in boxing. You know, these guys, the guys in the gym, pounding every day, getting hit in the head, and um, these these promoters. Just take advantage of him, man. Guy look up, he done fought for, you know, five, ten years and three or four world champs and and he, hey Rick, you got two hundred bucks. What? You need two hundred bucks and you was future I mean, a, a past world champ. And, and you know, I said, Man, you know, let me step in here and, and help these guys out. Let me make sure that um when these guys retire from now on, they're gonna have something to, to fall back on. Yeah. You need that man, and that's why I'm in. That's why I'm in boxing. I ain't in it. I ain't in it. You know. I, I mean, I understand that there's a lot of money could be made. Yeah. You know, they say Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather made a billion dollars. Mike Tyson made six hundred million. So definitely a lot of money in there that uh, I know could be used uh, for the community. Um, you know, a lot of people think I'm money. You know, they think my mom. My mom used to be bad about it too. She think I'm just money hungry. <laughs> Everything you do is money around it. But why not? Why not do things yeah. that money is around? You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna do it, you know, do something where you can make some money. So, um, I'm having fun with the boxing. You know, I got a couple of really good guys right now. I'm working with a guy, Troy Isley, uh, out of D.C., who um, bronze medalist at the Olympics. Uh, 11 and 0. Nice. He'll be fighting in March. Uh, kid Austin, the other kid I found, uh, 15 and 0. He signed the Golden Boy. I uh, think he'll be fighting in February. Um, and I picked up about six other kids out the Nationals this year. So I got a, I got a strong team in, in, in boxing. Uh, I'm positioning myself to uh, to eventually be one of the power players in the game as well. That's dope that you're getting behind these people, though. You know what I mean? And giving them a support system so that they can actually work to achieve the things that they're trying to do. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, you could have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the resources or the team, the support team to, like, you know, help guide and push you through it, um, 
And a lot of time that's not their strong suit either is management and, and, and the know-how that you're talking about that you could actually help them with that. Absolutely. Well, you know, when, when, when you're in the drug game, you're managing, you're marketing, you're the accountant, and all of those skills are transferable into other, other venues. You know, like with my dispensary, I don't understand the day-to-day operation to a dispensary, but I understand working with other people. You know, get the right person that, that can uh, um, do the intake. Get the person who can put the labels on them. Get the person who can put it in metrics. So if if you have those type of skills where, yeah, I don't know how to do it myself, but I have enough sense to get the right person and put them in that position. You understand, you understand customers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's what I was going to ask you was that from your life lessons as a youngster and your illegal activities, did that training help you in today's oh, business absolutely. world? Absolutely. Well, you know, on the street, if you don't do the deal right, it could get you killed. Yeah. You know, not 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 get you sued. Done. Get you killed. Yep. You know, the first person I ever saw get killed got killed over over one dollar. Mm. And the guy who killed him, everybody went, "Man, you killed him over a dollar." He said, "No, it wasn't a dollar. It was a principal." So. In the hood, you got to be careful. You got to be careful for principles because principles is bigger than money. Like it is in, in a real business world. Your principles, your your every, your word is everything in business. Right. So it's kind of the same what you're saying. But on the street. Right. And on the street, they don't understand. Like I was telling somebody the other day, like a lot of dudes that I grew up with, the way they won favor, they thought that they could win favor. I'm going to beat him up for you. I'm going to kill him for you. They they don't have the mentality that, oh, I'm going to show you how to make that car better or, or how to sell that car. That's how I'm going to win favor. No, they're going to win favor with some violence or some gangster gangsterism because this is what been feeding the hood. This is what they've been eating. This is what they've been digesting. So um, somehow we got to come in and counteract that and let them know, no, 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 this is not how you win favor. You win favor by going out and finding customers that uh, come to the store or, or customers that want to want to sell some great product to the store, you know, other than, than, than trying to do it with violence. Right. <clears throat> yeah. That's, you know, that right there is the old school method. You know what I mean? Like, cause Maybe they didn't have another skill set to bring to that table, and they thought that would be the, the fix it to the problem, and, and they would get favor this way. Instead of saying, instead of bringing to the table a way to make the business business more efficient or grow it out, bring something to the table that's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's tough in the hood. Yeah. It's uh. But that's why you know people like us have to keep doing the things that we do. So that now they can see that there's other avenues and that we don't have to stay in these streets and we don't have to stay with these rules, in, in my personal opinion, that has never worked. You know, yeah. I don't know who wrote these Bibles that we that we were going by on these streets, but they didn't work. They wasn't any good. Uh, and I think that with us writing new rules and new regulations on how our lives are supposed to carry on out here in these streets and at these corporate boards. Yeah. A lot of things need uh, adjustments at this point, man. Yeah, you can't stay with yeah. the same with the same plan, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, eventually that plan gets outdated. It gets outdated. You know, I read a book one time and it was saying this lady was using this great big old pot to cook a little bitty ham in and the man was like, why are you using that pot? And he said, I don't know, my mama did it. And the guy went and talked to the mama and he said, I would say, oh, I was doing it because that's all I had. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there was no special. <laughs> Wasn't no special to... effect, <laughs> yeah. but, but but by somebody handed it down to you and you never asked them where did it come from, you know, really important in the hood that we start questioning our information. You know, Asking you know, questions. Mr. Exactly. Mr. Ross, I, I hear in your voice politics. Do I do I hear maybe someday, somehow, some way getting involved in I don't know. You know, somebody entered my name into AI and and uh, you don't even believe what came back. One day president. There you go. <laughs> Why not? Get on down. That's Why not? Why not? 
Why not? Bring it. That would be something. Yeah, that would be crazy. Well, Donald Trump is doing it again. He got more convictions than anybody I know. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 if, if that says anything at all, <laughs> a lot of us got that didn't think we had a chance. <laughs> we might have a chance. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's crazy, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you haven't smashed that like yet, go ahead and do so. <laughs> Subscribe. If you're not subscribing, crack that all notification bell so you get down with the content we'd be dropping uh, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 Eastern, the start of the Dr. Green Thumb show. All right. And after this show is the mix show, Monday through Friday on uh, various channels like be Real TV 2 for people on YouTube. You don't want to go nowhere. You can go to Be Real TV 2 or secondary channels specifically for the mixes. Uh, follow us there. Subscribe, all that. And uh, also on Twitch, Be Underscore Real TV is the place you could find us there. If you're already on Twitch, stay locked in. We're going to just pop it off right after this show. And uh, for those that are full members of our home site, Be Real TV, y'all get the mix and this show. So, you should become a full member and all that. Um, and guys, um, did you know on this day in 1948, Anita Pointer of the Pointer Sisters was born. Happy birthday, Anita. They were dope, the Pointer Sisters, my. No doubt. And yeah. did you know on this day in 1953, Robin Zinder, is it, of Cheap Trick was born. I guess that's how you spell I'd say that last name. But Cheap Trick, man, they had a nice run. That live from Budokan album? Yeah. Legendary rock album. True that. Yeah. And did you know, on this day in 1971, George Harrison was the first Beatle to hit number one with My Sweet Lord. <clears throat> like when they, you know, broke up and did their individual things, he's the first one to go uh, number one. He was a genius. He looks like Jesus in that picture right there. I didn't say Jesus. I said Jesus. No, he looks like, my sweet Lord, he looks like Jesus. Well, he looks like white Jesus yeah. is what you're saying. All right. <laughs> Did you know in 1975, Nick Marmer of Death Cab for Cutie was born? Happy birthday. A lot of birthdays today. Did you know? On this day in 1976, David Bowie dropped his 10th studio album, Station to Station. Rest in peace, David Bowie. Yeah, and I did know that. <coughs> you did know that? I did. I, that's, I did know that. Big David Bowie fan. Hey, he knew that. Give him a round. Bowie. And did you know, in 1982, on this day, Static Selecta was born. Salute. And uh, healing vibes to my brother. You know, there's... Just uh, had some health issues recently, man. Uh, get well soon, my bro. And did you know, on this day, 1988, Nirvana went into the studio and recorded the 10th song demo that landed them a record deal? How about that? Mm. Oh, that's, so that's tight. I like that picture, too. That was a great pick. Or, and did you know, on this day in 1989, Tone Loke dropped his first album, Loked after dark. Hmm. Did you did you get down with Tone Loke, Rick? No, I, I mean I listened to the music, but, but yeah. I, I didn't know Tone. Oh, uh, right on. Do you remember we saw him, Fresno yeah. Airport? Remember? We saw him at the Fresno Airport. Yeah. Like a That's... month ago, we were standing there, and all of a sudden Tone Loke standing there next. Tone to us. didn't stay around long. Yeah, you know yeah. he he hit that album and uh... became a movie star. He started doing movies. He started. Oh, he? Do, yeah, he did yeah. voiceovers too. I mean, he did. He I think he did. What did he do? Two albums or one? Was it no, he had more than one record. Yeah, he had. Well, yeah, yeah. He he had some hits. He was like doing like what Snoop Dogg later ends up doing on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. You know, he was he was out there uh, making things happen. Yeah, and two studio albums. Yeah, two studio albums, and then he got into some movies, and then did voiceovers on some. Uh, uh, what is it, uh, Pixar or Disney mm. type of deals? I mean, he was doing it. Did you know? On uh, this day, 1989, Estension, I think that's how you say it, was born. Rest in peace. Tell me, Ray, how do you say it? Extension? Extentacion? Wow. 
Yeah, he had his shit complicated, man. He was dope, though. I that kid was you. dope. Yeah, he was very dope. He was kind of being inked as like the new generation Pac type thing. I don't know about that. Not with the politics and stuff, but being able to carry those generations. I mean, well, yeah, you know, he was very influential to some of these young definitely. cats. You know yeah. what I'm saying? All right, um, now let's get into this. Hey, how's it going? This is Michelle here at Dr. Green Thumbs LAX. This week we're highlighting the Zotics brand in which we have two strains, the Blue Guava and the Grape Guava. If you're looking for an amazing tasting flower, I definitely recommend these two. So when you come in, definitely check out Zotics. We're located at 5494 West Sentinel Avenue, just 10 minutes from the airport. We're open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Now back to you guys at the studio. Check out our Dr. Green Thumb locations through California. The addresses will come up uh, at the end of the show. Now let's get into submissions. Blue guava. Submissions, submissions, submissions. Submissions, submissions. Submissions, submissions, submissions. Submissions. Big shout out to Snacks. All right, first one of the day here. We got our boy Cedric up in here, and he made a little, uh, some garlic teriyaki chicken stir fry. <coughs> okay. He, he had already taken a few, uh, <laughs> a few forkfuls. Yeah, it looked like somebody got into that already. <laughs> yeah, if you go send us a picture, send us <laughs> the picture before you dig in. Couldn't wait. He couldn't wait. I, you know, it looks good, though. It's, I don't blame him. It looks bomb. It looks healthy. You got to take that picture like Trace right before there you, go. you eat it. <laughs> yeah. Nothing eats before Instagram in Trace's <laughs> world. We got uh, Cedric up in here. He's showing off some uh, tempura jalapenos with tuna. Nice. All right. Bring it. That's a good one. Yep. Looks like something's on fire back there too, like a little, like the little shell, yeah, that, or whatever that is. The not a shell; it's one of them little tin foil things. He's also showing off. Uh, is it ahi sashimi? Ahi sashimi, son. All right. Yeah, Don pointed out the uh, gold flakes right there. Oh, he's <laughs> balling, son! Wow. Huh. Gold flake truffle. He's also showing off some uh, torch seared garlic king crab Sash- sashimi. Spent some money last night, huh? <laughs> date, date night date for night. sure. You guys like this type of food? Seafood, sushi, that type of stuff? Yeah. yeah. Vegan. Vegan. Oh. oh, well, you know, Rick is vegan. <laughs> I like your style, dude. You don't, Bolton? Uh, no, I kind of like it, but it messes with my stomach. Ah. So I kind of stay away from it. Tender belly. All right. We got a Jay up in here saying my dad snapped with his nachos the other night. They're fire. Okay. That looks good. Look good. That looks good. Mm-hmm. This is before the oven. And, all right. Yeah, I could do that. As long as they ain't putting no meat on there. Yeah, I don't think he did. Keep the meat off. Bomb. How long has it been since since uh, you ate meat? Thirty two and thirty two years. Yeah. <clears throat> Salute to that. Nothing had to die for thirty two years. Not on your end. <laughs> Outstanding. And we got a highly Sally C saying, "Doctor Greentham asked what song to remake, and I instantly thought of the Humpty Dance." And he's also showing off <laughs> the Miami's coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one right there, boy. <laughs> Rest in peace, Shock G, man. <laughs> well done. Yeah, you guys would kill it with that. Possibly. Needs to practice, though. We got Loco up in here showing off his top three album covers. He's saying, I love the talk last week when everyone gave their favorite hip-hop album covers. Can the crew please give their top three non-hip-hop album covers? You're his favorites. Non-hip-hop? Yep. Led Zeppelin, the first album. Uh, let's see. Uh, non-hip-hop. Um, Is this by artwork? Yes. Beatles, Rubber, Rubber Soul. And uh, let's see. Third one, third one, third one. 
Um, it's an Earth, Wind, and Fire cover. I can't remember which album it was, though. Might have been their first one, though. That's a pretty trippy, trippy album covers. One with um, <clears throat> Reasons on there. Yeah, Reasons. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that album cover was, was a classic. I mean, it used to be hung up in everybody's bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, that was dope. You got top three, um, top three non-hip-hop album covers you like? It caught your eye, Lesto. Who me? Yeah. Uh, mm, can't think off the top. Maybe some James Brown covers. He always has some. Parliament like Funkadelics. Yeah. yeah. Got to go with one of them. They used yeah. to have some crazy album covers. For sure. What about you, Sam? One that I, I can't think of all all of my three top three, but one that that comes to mind right away is um, the the Kiss Destroyer album cover. Hmm. That one's pretty fly. With, the, with them in the action pose and shit, you know. Awesome. Yeah. How about you, Trace? You got? I would have to say like uh, the Journey albums were always dope artwork. The, a lot of the the older Journey albums, and then also uh, <coughs> growing up in San Francisco, I was around a lot of all that uh, Grateful Dead art. All their album covers were yeah. pretty dope. The skeleton skulls with the roses and that kind of shit. So those kind of those were always the ones that art wise always kind of struck me. All right. And Loco showing off his three right here. So this is his first one. That's a dope one. Axe as bold as love. Yeah. That's dope, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's iconic right there. I yeah. mean, you see that to this day on posters, on, you know, people get this tattoo on them if they're, you know, into the culture that hard. That is iconic. Yup. <laughs> okay. Well done. Pink Floyd. Uh, the Dark Side uh, of the Moon, uh, Moon album cover is dope, too. We got Miss Raquel's World up in here saying, Thinking warm thoughts out here in Chicago. It's about to be almost 40 degrees this week. Oh Maybe I'll lay God. out on my deck. Oh, my God. In 40 degrees. 40. Yeah, nah. I would not be late. I wouldn't even be standing on the deck at 40 uh -huh. degrees. I'm like inside. I might go out here and there because I run a little hot, but. It's cold out there, man. In Chicago, got that wind coming off the lake like it does. It gets lower than that. Woo. It's cold all back east. I got a call from Philadelphia and Jersey. I was just there at a boxing match, and they was like, man, you got out just in time. Snow was everywhere. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> D.C. is pretty bad, too, right now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going through it on the east coast with this, with, with the, I can't remember what they called it, Arctic Blast. Polar. Yeah. Vortex. All right. We got Jay up in here saying, want to give a shout out to Midget Mike. He made some AI photos of my buddy Mitchell right here. And he's saying, rest in peace to Mitch. Rest in peace to your homie, man. All right. All right. Salute. Dope. Yeah. Dope. <clears throat> Definitely dope. <laughs> We got a Mizzle 10 up in here. He's saying, uh, here's a, one of the few lists I came up with in no order that Psycho Leasy requested the other week regarding black gangster movies. That's a good movie, man. Classic. You know, the guys that made this movie made a movie before this um, called Harsh Times, and they couldn't sell it because the, the ending of it was, was pretty... Um, <laughs> It was pretty crazy if you've seen Harsh Times with Christian Bale and uh, Freddie Rodriguez, right? Mm -hmm. But when this hit, that's when they were able to sell Harsh Times as a movie, and it comes out slightly later, but it's like, it's pretty crazy. I'm Wait, who's that. in it? Yeah, what, Christian what? Bale and Freddie Rodriguez and Neva Longoria. I've seen that one. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. That does get ill. That one did hmm. get ill. That was their first movie, but this one is the one that sold first, which was Training Day. All right, so he started off with Training Day, and then he's got a kind of a big list right here. Here's the next movie. Shatas. That's a good movie. In that? Mm -mm, nope. And it's to society. That was good. Belly. It's an East Coast hustle flick, you know? Yeah, that's a sick picture, too. Yeah, that is a good flick. Paid in full. Classic. Classic. Yep. Yep. Le Juice. 
<clears throat> that was a pretty good movie, Sugar Hill. It was underrated, but it's all right. <coughs> colors. 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 Den- colors. A, colors. A Dennis Hopper colors. film. Colors. That's right. Dennis Hopper. Yeah, Dennis Hopper got down with that one. Yeah. He was living in Venice at the time. So he was seeing a lot of crazy craziness happening because in Venice, you know, the gangbanger was pretty crazy at that point. A lot of colors. A lot of colors. Dennis Hopper is kind of a trippy dude, man. He's easy. Oh, yeah. He's on some different things. So. True that. You ever see his movie Blue Velvet? Yep. Uh-uh. He's a trip. In that. It's not his movie. He's, he plays a supporting actor in this movie, but he is a trip in this uh-huh. movie. He's addicted to um <laughs> to doing NAS, what they know, <laughs> call now. <laughs> Oh, and some of the best scenes is, you know, him taking a hit from the mask and then going off on his chick. I got to see this. Or, like, whoever he's, like, giving the shit to. It's hilarious. I got to see it. It's a trippy movie. I mean, I don't know if you could sit through the whole movie, but when you get to the Dennis Hopper parts, they're they're a trip. (laughs) Hmm. All right. We got a Wild Diamond. This one's pretty random up in here, Um, but Wild Diamond is saying, uh, could you imagine Chris Brown versus Chuck Liddell? No, I couldn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not, no. Yeah, no. I'd be feeling pretty bad for Chris. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you wouldn't be dancing for a while, hey. probably. <laughs> oh, no. He's a tall dude, too, though, Chris Brown. He's not a little guy. But, I mean, Chuck Liddell, I mean, you, he made his off of knocking fools out. Like, he's a pro fighter. Yeah. You know? It's a difference. It's a difference. It's a difference. It, you, you may be good with the hands, but when you're dealing with a pro who's got good hands, slap fight. Out of here. <laughs> Don't do it, B. Mm-mm. We got Show Ryu King saying, Yo, I saw Madonna at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. Awesome. She saw Madonna in Detroit, Michigan? Yep. Right on. At first, I thought he said he saw Madonna at Little Caesars Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Little Caesars Arena. She's, she's, she's killing that diet, bro. No, she's on tour right now. Doing her thing. Madonna's out there, you know, flexing. Yeah, at the Ray off, he was like, Little Caesars Arena. Little Caesars got money. They could license the arena. All right. We got Cato Cut up in here. He's saying, uh, late post, but my fantasy football team won the Super Bowl last month. Shout out to the Green Thumbers. All right. Yeah. Green Thumbers. Yeah. League champs. Let's go. All right. Represent. You, you, awesome. Do you do fantasy football, Send Dog? I do not. Uh, <clears throat> you never got into it? No, nah, man. And heads have been hitting me up every year, every before the season starts, a bunch of people hit me up. Do I want to be part of a league? And I have never, ever once tried it. I know a lot about football, but you, I've never. You might tried. be good at this. I think if I, yeah, my, yeah, I think I might be too. But if I think if Trace you know. explained to you how that worked, you'd probably like be killing it. So. <laughs> he actually oh, would please, be really not good. Another, not another Trace explanation of things. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, no, come on! Did somebody else explain it to me? Or should I, I would just explain- Google it or something? You Come know, on, Mr. Vegas. Tell what us. What I want him to explain is how'd you do in gambling last weekend in the NFL, Sendon? In the last weekend? Yeah, how'd you do last weekend? Um, well, I had. Uh, who'd, you, I, who'd you take? I, I picked Detroit. How'd I? Okay. And they, they got it. Yeah. Wow. So you won there? Yeah. And then I picked. What were the other games? You were playing a parlay, weren't you? On that a, was. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at the Chiefs versus. Um, who was yeah, the it? The Niners and the Packers. The, the Niners played, and the Packers. Uh, I, I picked the Niners there, <laughs> right? And then I think I, I yeah, I did pretty good except for the, one score that, that the Bills. messed my whole thing up. But I I missed it by like two points. The Chiefs played the Bills. That was a pretty close game. Yeah, but nowadays it's different than like um, a few years back because now gambling is legal in these sports leagues. So, <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to convince him of, yeah, is to quit playing these parlays. He plays these like four and five game parlays. 
when he when he see he understands football enough to pick the games individually and he wins these games. He picked four out of five, but because he lost that one game, the whole thing's in the tank. Yeah. He knows enough about football. You should pick him individually as well. Pick him individually, yeah. stand up. Yeah, well, okay. That's the, I mean, I don't want to get that far into it, but or uh get into fantasy football, man. I'm fantasy telling football. You. It's just a fantasy. And I have this idea of starting a football league for men over 60. <laughs> Senior ball. Senior ball. Senior ball. And I'll be a rookie in two years. Sponsored by <laughs> Advil will be the number one sponsor. Yeah. And Geritol. <laughs> uh, it'll win, I'm telling you. It'll, it'll, it'll happen. Excellent. Uh, Tiger Bomb will be one of your <laughs> best Yeah, friends. all that. Ace Bandage, all that, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Bengay. Uh, all right, next. We got one happy mama. She's saying it's about time for the UFC. It UFC removes cannabis from the prohibited substance list. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, half those dudes be smoking out. But they'd rather do that than some pills. Sure. It's going to, you know, damage them much, much later. We already know this. The pharmaceutical game ain't nice to you. To your organs. We've known this. We've known this. So, yeah, let them smoke <laughs> or take edibles, however, they're consuming the cannabis. Hmm. They're not oh, checking yeah. for cannabis in a few other sports now, right? Like yeah, football, baseball. Baseball, they're allowed to get down with it, but they cannot be seen taking pictures with brands or photos with. But, you know, they're not like, um, it's it's off the ban list. They can't attach themselves. To yeah, they cannot market, promote, or own ah. while they are playing in the league, but they can totally consume. Hmm. And that's cool. Word up. I mean, awesome. because when you think about it, you know, baseball league, the, the ba with baseball, um, it's a lot of kids watching, more so than most other sports, I think. Um, so they they want to make sure that none of those players are, like, taking – photos with a cannabis brand or promoting a cannabis brand or anything like that so that parent groups don't come back like against the team the liability that that is you know what i mean but it's okay for them to do a budweiser commercial yep yeah alcohol is legal wrap your head around that wrap your head around that <laughs> <laughs> little alcohol timmy gets legal. to see his father come home plastered from yeah budweiser's <laughs> i just had to add that in there yeah. a little jab <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right and this uh, next submission threw me off i thought it was strong tone at first but we got stony up in here just sending us a selfie oh you thought it was strong tone yeah from the phone right away from far away i was like is that step tone you, you need some glasses <laughs> all right salute man shout to stony how's it going and um we got uh funky he's saying hey funky fam this is smoky don smokestack <laughs> mac the homie sent me this and can i get a follow he's shouting out uh funky field tips and Dr. Green Thumb papers, and he's got the Funko. That wasn't, you know, on that funky field tip tin, that wasn't my best um, signature right there. Uh, <laughs> it's like a bit. That was the. It'd be on the box, I got it. On the tin, not so much. All right. So I was just rating my, you know, I had to rate my own signature. You know what I'm saying? I, that's sometimes Boring how it. I do. We got T. Lee saying, I know B threw out the idea of doing some hip-hop covers on the show, but I still can't believe that we need to do a special karaoke edition on the mix one day. What? And he sent this in. All the notes back there. <laughs> Go to <kill> right. <laughs> Your kiss is on You're my, my list because your kiss, your kiss, I can't resist because your kiss is on my list. All right. When you end right now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We're available for uh, yeah, we're available yeah, we're for, for, for birthdays, barbershop, and, barbershop, um, quartets. Openings, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know we're still booking gigs off that. You know what I'm saying? Oh my god! Hey, <laughs> because when uh, our our bro Roz dude, aka Skinny Pablo, was up in here, when you put him and Bolton next together, they looked like a young Hall and Oates. <laughs> so you know we were highlighting this about them. All right. And you're talking about uh, the Dennis Hopper movie? Is this, is this what you were talking yeah. about? Yeah. <laughs> he has some of the best uh, lines in the movie. <laughs> yeah, you got to see it. If you haven't seen it, Trace. That should, you know what? 
you sh- that should be one of the recommendations for a B movie night with Eric Bobo. Oh, Watch yeah. Blue Velvet on B movie night. Trust. All right. And that seems to be it. We thank you for your submissions. Keep them coming to be real TV contest at gmail.com and we will put them on as you might know. Uh, we're going to get into the asylum shortly. Uh, but uh, once again, smash that like. Uh, cracked all notification bell. Subscribe to the channel. Share it out. Tell your friends. Uh, don't hold out, man. We're here with uh, the legendary, the real Freeway Ricky Ross up in here. Hey, you just also put out a book, yeah? yeah uh, two books. Three books. I got three books out now. Man. I mean, <clears throat> a- another, you know, another checklist thing, right? <laughs> Did you ever think you'd be writing books? Never, never. I didn't think nobody wanted to hear my story, you know? <clears throat> oh, are you crazy? I it's mean, not one of the now, most I, interesting I, I, stories <clears throat> ever. At one time, I didn't feel like that, though. I didn't feel that 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 nobody wanted to know what Rick Ross was doing. You know, uh, yeah. now it's totally different. I, I get it. You know, so many different shows. You know, hitting the TV screen and um, different people throwing my name out there and to 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 verify their situation. Right. Um, I, I get it. I, How did you know that there was something to to the story? I mean, here you are. You're in prison. Um, <clears throat> You know, as far as you, you had been told that, you know, you're going to spend your last day here. And then you start hearing whispers of your names being mentioned in songs. Then you start. No, hearing, I knew before that. You knew before. Yeah. When, when, when LA Times put you on the front page of the newspaper, you know, you're like, oh, it's something there. And There's when a- he's on the news and they're chasing him on the news. <laughs> yeah, that was, the that news. was crazy. You're on the news. You know, um, there was these cops, these crooked cops called the Freeway Task Force that was planting drugs, shoot at you, and all kind of stuff. They was gangsters. Mm-hmm. Um, when they shot at me one night and I got away, they put on the news, armed and dangerous. Ooh. So when you start to see that stuff, you start to understand that momentum is building. You didn't momentum even put one shot back at them. Nah, I'm, I'm going to shoot at no cops, man. We, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Like they, didn't, they, they, they tried to make it to where that... You shot at them. On yeah, that's what they said. Give that's the impression. Call. Give the impression that you would shoot back. Or something. That was the report. Yeah, building the a case. Said that building I shot a first. case is what they're yeah, doing there. Yeah. Well, they got to justify because you know they 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 were just randomly shooting. Sure bang, yeah. bang, 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 bang. Mm. Now and they, these bullets hitting people houses and 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 yeah. you know because I ain't gonna stand in the middle of the street. I took off. I'm running behind houses and everything. They didn't take any accountability for any of that. No, no, no. You know they wind up going to trial. Yeah. Yeah, they wound up going to trial. So, but after those news articles it hit, I I started to see. And then when when rap kind of took the gangster turn, I was like, holy shit, these motherfuckers is talking about the shit I used to do. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So when that hit, I, I I knew that 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 there was hope for me, in 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 these lanes. I just I, we just dropped the artist too on Universal Music Group, uh, Juice the Mac. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, because yeah. you don't have enough. Going Tom on. Brady, you're not doing enough between boxing, dispensaries, <laughs> author of books. I mean, you know, the juggle is real. And, and it's time, you know. Like I said, we got a short time. I, I, I look at myself. I might have another, if I get lucky, you know, ten years, fifteen years. On nah. The you're good, 64. Look at you, though. You're young. Yeah, but, you know, we talking about most people now only getting 70, 80 years old, and it's mm-hmm. over. So um, I, th- I think it's different these days, though, because what we have available to us to, like, sustain and maintain is, is different than what our parents and grandparents had. Yeah, and you haven't eaten meat in 32 years. Yeah. That's a big <laughs> that part. That's a big plus. That's a big plus. That's, eggs, that's very good. No egg, no too. butter, no cheese. Yeah. I cut no soda. I haven't drunk a soda, man, in yeah. ooh, forty some years. I have a friend oh. that that lives a similar has a similar uh style of thing and he's recently turned over seventy years old and uh his hair is still black. Wow. You know what I mean? And I, I tell him I go cause I think it's cause you don't eat meat. Well, you know, I just really started turning gray about five years ago. Hmm. About five years ago I started to see Grays pop in and, and when you turned sixty, yeah, it held out on you till sixty. Yeah, I would, I did pretty well. All right, bro. I mean, I I just think people if if they're taking care of themselves, you know, and 
due to like the the different ways you can take care of yourself in terms of diet <clears throat> and activity and what's available to people now than what it was 20 years ago i think people definitely are going to live longer if they take care of themselves if, yeah if you're out there wilding out abusing everything yeah you're gonna have a short run <laughs> there's people your age and my age that look twice our age oh yeah for you sure know what i mean and that's because they they live a hard life in a different way you know maybe they went through all the crazy things but like you know they still are are living with a certain diet this certain inactivity and stressing and stressing yeah that's stress. a lot of stress a lot of stress do you meditate no i don't i stretch though that's it, another form of it <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah i do the stretching um push-ups you know that that's my workout now push-ups yeah. sit-ups uh, just just enough though you know not not um you know, not trying to be Mr. World no yeah. more, you know, just, but just, just enough to stay toned and, yeah. and, and, and to know that you did do some work. Hey, man, that's, that's, it's all what you put into it, I think. You know what I mean? I mean, I remember watching this guy's dad at like 50, what, he was 55 or something like that, ripping 18-inch arms and a six-pack. He was in the gym every day. His diet was like... Similar to yours. Yeah, and and uh and we're yeah. like in you know, in our twenties and we ain't in shape like he is. You know what I mean? That that was like seeing like, hey, it's all what you put into it, because we seen what he was putting into yeah. it. And it he, sort of transferred into us later, right? Yeah. Would you say? It it did, it did. But he you know, he took it to another level and he's ninety now. And I and I always I always attribute it to him taking extreme care of himself as a as a young striker as a younger man and uh you know he stuck to his diet i mean for remember for like 20 yeah. years he only ate tuna yeah only tuna <laughs> so that's as, the only as, thing he ate as his protein yeah, yeah. Wow. he ate it with some uh some like brown bread i don't i, I don't know what kind of was like a it, wheat bread, like a type, wheat of bread thing. type of thing and or rye something he, he would get mad if we fucked with that tuna and that bread he would get mad with you could have <laughs> anything else in the crib you touched his tuna <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Yeah. These guys were getting it, son. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to open up the doors to the Insane Asylum. Got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. We are here for it. Hey, yo, what's up? It's Everlast, and you're watching the highest show in the world. Yo, what's up? We're Wait. Escape, and we was just rocking with the Dr. Green yes. Thumb show. The, the highest, highest show, show in, in the, the world. world. Yeah, man, it's Jeezy. Jeezy, we're all about to be on the Dr. Green Thumb show. Highest show in the world. Dr. Green Thumb Show, man. You already know what it is. What's up, y'all? It's Lil CC. I'm on the Dr. Green Thumb Show, the highest show in the world. What's happening? It's G Perico at the Dr. Green Thumb Show, the highest show in the world. Tune in right now. Big shout out to Be Real TV from Jesse Borrego and Crucito. Los Vatos Locos Forever. Welcome to the Insane Asylum. All right, let's do this. First one of the day here, we got Mars Fu asking Rick, um, what does your shirt say and where can we get your merch? Uh, the Real Rick Ross is not a rapper. You can get it at my <laughs> website, realrickyross.com. That's is. good. That's a good one, my friend. That's good. <laughs> we got Chris up in here saying, very glad Rick is out and became a, became a success. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad too, man. I, I, I couldn't go back in there. Yeah, no, man. That ain't it. Ain't no girls up in that joint. That's right. <laughs> True that. We got Midget Mike um, saying, free, name a rapper who gets no airtime in your car. Ah, oh, man. Juice the Mac. Oh, no, 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 no. No, they don't get any airtime. Yeah, they don't get any car. airtime. Uh, Rick Ross. Oh, <laughs> None. I, I was zero. That, that, I was that, waiting for that's that. That's a very hit, hit the stop button. That's a very, very honest answer, my friend. <laughs> if I hear him in the club, I'm gonna go holler at the DJ. Man, you playing that dude, man? <laughs> I can understand though. You must be hating. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me walk through the door and put his record on. What's happening Hello. with you? Yeah, nah. I mean, you know. I gotta ask you: Have you guys crossed paths? Have you crossed paths? Nah. Never? I ain't looking for him. Just in traffic somewhere at an event him. or I ain't looking for him. Yeah, I ain't looking for him. Let him do his thing. Yeah, you pushing on a different plane right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let we him got, get his money. We got the Pope up in here saying, Holy shit, it's stone cold, be real. 
That's right. We got the Pope again asking, Send Dog, what do you love and hate the most about being famous? Uh, oh, man, the uh, good question. What do you first love? About it? Yeah. You know, when you walk into a crowded restaurant and the guy recognizes you and sits your party down right away, you know. <laughs> okay, always, I that, could see. That always impresses the kids, <laughs> you know. And then uh, probably what I hate about it the most is the... Uh, and I don't mean to be a hater or nothing, but like when you know when you're having dinner or some chick or your kids or your family, or then, and somebody comes up and says, "Hey, man, I don't mean to bother you, but I'm gonna do it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that part. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you just came up and said, "Hey, can I, can I, can we do this real quick?" instead of saying, "I hate to," <laughs> yeah, because that part right there sort of is like the little knife. <laughs> I hate to do this, but. But we you know you're that. wrong, so don't. Yeah. I think it's approach. People got to work on their approach <clears> with <throat> things. You know, just be up front. Or wait till after. Or you just know, wait. If you got time, time to wait. Or just wait. Yeah. That might be the thing. If you're that important to them, yeah. they'll wait. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. We got the Pope again asking, Free, did you ever deal with East Coast mobsters? East Coast mobsters, um, I guess, yeah, yeah, you could say so. I you sold mean, drugs in the East Coast, so I guess, I mean, the way, 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 just say yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah. There you go. We got Edgar up in here saying, has Freeway Rick Ross um, met Griselda Blanco? No, I never met Griselda, um, but I knew people who did. We got Chris up in here asking Rick, what kind of TV shows did you watch as a kid? Um, so I watched uh, Good Time, you know, used to be one of yeah. my favorites. Uh, Red Fox. Uh, Sanford and Son. Word up. Yeah, 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 I love Sanford and yeah. Son. Um, mostly cartoons when I was coming up. Wasn't really a TV buff. He was out there hustling. Yeah, at a young age. <laughs> it was bottles and cans before it was cocaine. That's right. <laughs> it's got to start somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> we got the smoke train up in the chat, the godfather. He's saying, listening to the show right now as I'm working out, almost healed up, getting in shape. Three more weeks at therapy, and I'll be good to go. All right. Right down to 258 pounds from 304. Let's go. 250-pound goal by the 16th. I'm going to get Trace out there on the disc golf course. Let's go. Let's go, Godfather. Shred it. Shred it. Let's go. Salute to the Godfather out there. He's watching. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Going to be back here soon. Salute to the legend. He he had a hip replacement? No. He had knee 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 surgery. Knee surgery. That's right. From the years in the ring. So. Oh, could you imagine the beating those knees have taken all those years? Oh. Knee drops. Oh. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's right. We got Irie. Um, she's saying, us here in Texas are waiting on Oklahoma to become recreational. Yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, at some point, Oklahoma will get it together and, you know, fully, uh, fully go in. They're going to blow the doors off Texas. Yep. They're going to get all the Texas money, and Texas is going to get jealous. And then say, hey, guess what? We're going to open up to. That's, you know, manifestation. We're going to try to manifest that. Yeah, you got to. It'll happen. Yeah. And we got Dogs Gone Wild West asking OG Rick, what will be the name of the movie coming out? I don't know. Right now it's uh, titled The Rick Ross Story. You got any any directors in mind? Mike Ho is already hired as the director. Nice. Uh, Can I get an audition? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 if you need any extras, hey. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah you know, you oh, we're, we're there for we're you. We have plenty of those kind of roles. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'm with it. I'm with it. What you want me to do? I'm down. We can uh, do right. those. <laughs> uh, I, I think they they're gonna start casting in a few weeks. <laughs> from what I they know. told me, yeah. Oh, word up. They, they were gearing up the cast. Uh, matter of fact, Mike Ho called me yesterday as well. So the producer and Mike called me, and, and they let me know that uh, we're gearing back up. You can put San, you can make Santa L.A. sheriff <laughs> or a Firestone sheriff. <laughs> or... I, don't even know. I, I, I would have to shave. But yeah, you got to shave your, your, Man, the not beard. Let's not do that one. You could totally do it. I know I could do it. Just... 
<laughs> yeah, one of them ball ball breaker cops from back in those days. Are how about they got like three or four different sets within within the sheriffs? You know what I mean, and they, they had the 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 main sheriff, well, retired or resigned or not resigned or went to jail. Should have went to jail. Yeah, he's he's. They had they made him come testify about the gangs that exist within the sheriff's yeah. station. Wow. Yeah, like five gangs, five different gangs. Been there. Crazy. When L.A. County was rough, forty. I was in forty eight hundred before. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in forty eight hundred. Crazy things they dealing with over <coughs> there. Corruption. Yup. We you, got we got ask a bum. He's saying uh, the most realistic hood movie was Don't Be a Menace. Yeah, that was hilarious. And where would you rank uh, Ice Cube's movie Boys in the Hood in 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 that section? What in terms of in terms of legacy and just you know. And I think it's a classic. You know what I mean? It's. A... I believe. Yeah, I think so. I, I think so. Yeah. Oh, definitely a classic. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, one of one of the one of the best ever. Yeah, exactly. I we think got... th- I think the representation in it was good. You know what I mean? It wasn't exaggerated like you see stuff that you know comes out later, slightly exaggerated. But uh, yeah, no, I think it's dope. We got J Max C saying, if y'all want to laugh, peep out episode 299, Shannon versus Rampage. Shannon versus Rampage. All right. When we had them on the podcast, remember, through Zoom, those guys were going at it with each other. Oh, yeah. They kept yelling at each other and screaming because they had the fight coming up. Oh, it was hilarious. Mm. They should have had a podcast together. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, I'm telling you, the type of shit they were saying that it was gold. You know, so they should totally, like, if they don't ever fight each other, they should definitely make a podcast together. And if they fight each other after that, they should make a podcast together because they just, like, their chemistry is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. We got Mizzle 10 saying, Rick, I have both of your books. I bought them during the pandemic in May of 2020. I plan on being at your dispensary this Friday. What time are you open? And $170 will be spent. We open at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'll get there probably around 10. They need you to come but, by and pick them up. But if you're going to be there <laughs> and you want that bag, make sure you get there early. Don't wait on me because those bags going to be gone. There's only going to be 64 of them. Um, They'll be snatched up yeah, quick. They'll snatch them up quick, man. They they what, loving those bags. What, what kind of goodies are in there? Oh, we just take everything, eights and ounces and vapes and Edibles and just throw it all in the bag. Less is thinking, like, I'm going to get my ass over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to be there at, like, 5 in the morning. Yeah. I'll be the first one there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We and got DJ. You, we, had, we, had a, we had an art contest on the gate, too. We, we got a dope art contest we did out on the, on the gate. About 20 artists showed up. Oh, that's dope. They're doing uh, weed graffiti. You got you probably got a lot of good pieces out of that, right? Oh my goodness, my gate looks beautiful now. It was just a <laughs> black, just a black gate, and I was like, "Hi, ah, you do something to that gate." Now it says some stuff. Yes, oh, got to so get down there and check it out this Friday, the grand opening. We got M. Coach G saying, "Rick, when the dispensary takes off and business is booming, what's your next move?" Uh, well, the next thing I want to do. Uh, <clears throat> I have four more licenses that I'm working on right now, opening up uh, dispensaries. Once I do those, then I want to go into the grow. Uh, and then I'm going to focus on boxing, you know, lock this boxing down. And then the run for president after that? <laughs> the presidential a, run. Presidential hey, run. AI going to have to put my ballot in for me. You're going to have to campaign around the country. Put me in your, <laughs> put me in your cabinet, man. <laughs> All right, done deal. <laughs> We're going to make you the manager, let's, campaign manager. Let's go. There it is. Dr. Green Thumb. We That's got right. DJ Paz saying salute to the real Rick Ross. Shout out salute. to you. Shout out to you. We got Rex saying, yo, um, no eating meat, no, no eating red meat does wonders, I hear. And Ask a Bum is saying not eating preservatives ensures a longer life. True that. Yep. Preservatives are, are the things that get you the worst. That's sodium. Yeah. We got 10 Flowers saying it's so funny that you say that send dog. That you say, that you say that send dog because I saw you at Coyote Sue Show, at Coyote's Sushi in Downey twenty years ago, and Kyoto. you were not in the mood. 
any um, SG stories. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I mean, you butchered that. Twist. Yeah, let me go back. It's... Well, I don't. Their their typing is a little weird. It's okay. so funny that you say that send dog because I saw you at Kyoto's Sushi it's in Downey. It's Kyoto su- Sushi. Oh, Kyoto Sushi in right. Downey 20 years ago, and you were not in the mood. Any Southgate stories? I think that's what he's saying. Kyoto. Oh, you know, in terms of uh, you know, sometimes. When fans come in the inappropriate way and you turn them. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? Is that you said? I, I kind of remember. <laughs> I kind of remember something at a, at a sushi spot a long time ago. But that's what I meant, you know, like when you're, I was probably there with my kids or something. I was trying to grow up and give them attention, you know, and, uh, you know, and yeah, make I'm, them, and make must, them feel like it's it. about us, not me. <laughs> And somebody must have came up and be like, hey, man, sorry to bother you, but uh, I saw you guys that, uh, you know, here and there. Can I? Not right now, Holmes. Not right now. I probably, I'm having Sue show. I probably said something rude, and if I did, you know, uh, my apologies, mate. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't nothing personal. You just came at me at the wrong minute. But, you know, normally I try to stay approachable. Um, but, you know, I think there's those times when, you know, like a little, there should be like a little boundary and, and just what your turn shit. Boundaries. Thing. When when the family's out on Sue show night, <laughs> boundaries. Yeah. Read that too fast. My bad. <laughs> Coyotes. <laughs> I re- that makes me remember the, the time that we, we all went out one night. B, we were young as fuck. And we went to this underground hip hop spot and, and we saw fucking Chuck D there. Yeah. Right. And he he was hanging around for an hour or longer, but we didn't come up to him and, you know, and, oh my God, you know, but when we saw that he was alone for a few seconds, that's when we went up there and introduced ourselves to him. And we were like, hey man, we're so-and-so and nice to meet you. And then we step and that's, you know, that's when people do that to me, I'm like, see now, that's how you do that shit right there. And you come say hello, shake a brother's hand, you know, and do Keep it thing. pushing. Yeah, Keep it moving. Exactly. He want to tell you his whole life story? Yeah, no. Man, you, you know my uncle? Yeah. My, my, my uncle was so and so and so, and and then he ran with. <laughs> yeah, he knew you and from you, my and the other. He was your customer. <laughs> Do you rem- remember my uh, uncle from back in 1985? And. Oh, man. Well, you really didn't know him, but he was with such and such. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you might, you know, God. it happens. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things, man. You just got to deal with it. Yeah. All right. We got Elmo. He's asking free. Have you ever heard of people flavoring crack? Yeah, we used to cook it in um uh, in soda, Seven Up, Coke, strawberry, different different flavors, and they say it gave it a different flavor. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't try it. Yes. And we got the Pope again saying, Sen, I'm in my uh, grad school for sports marketing. I'd be honored if you'd let me interview you for one of my classes this semester. We'll talk Raiders. Yeah, all right, I'm with it. How much you gonna pay me? Oh. <laughs> For an interview? <laughs> I'm fucking with him, man. I'm chilling, I'm chilling. I'm with it. Especially about the Raiders? I'm with oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm with, I'm with it. You know, Both hit me up guys, or sorry. let me know how to get a hold of you or whatever. I'm, I'm down. I'm, we'll talk some football. Hey, they hired your boy, right? Yeah, AP. Yeah. Yeah, like from uh, Compton. Congratulations Compton. to him, man. And I think he was the overall fan favorite, and that's who everybody wanted in there. Because to me, like, looking at it, like, he kind of brought that Raider spirit as a coach. <clears throat> yeah. And you got to have that kind of coach for that team. And you yeah, see... It's and the, the part of the mystique, I think. And the mystique you're talking about, B, did you see how he pulled up to get his uh, signature signed on his contract? Pulled up in a 64 Impala on wires. That's right. Good I'm for him. red one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, that's, a, that's a way to represent, son. He, he, drives, with, mad at he that. drives that car to every game, but I think what really got it done was one of the star players. I think the biggest star player on the Raiders, a guy named Max Crosby, straight came out and said, and even made a post about it, that if he if AP wasn't hired, then he would consider going mm. to a different team. Wow. And this is a guy that has got a Raider tattoo got on his arm. Keep that so, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that was like, huh, well, if that guy's talking that, you gotta take him serious. And, and, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, when your star player is comfortable with that guy and thinks he can get it done and everybody else rallies rallies behind that, I mean, that's something to take note of. Maybe he is the guy. We'll see next year. Congrats, AP. Yep. Congrats. All right. We got OG Gamers Club saying, hey, Rick, any tips for how to start a legitimate business after everything you've been through? How do you go legitimate despite the factors against you? 
Well, you got to be patient for one thing. You know, uh, in legitimate business, it's not like when, um, you know, when we started selling crack, you could go on any block that was hot and, and, and clean up in one day. But with legit business, it takes time. You know, we've been open 30 days. And uh, the first day, first day we did really well. You know, I think we did about 1,600 that day. But then the next day we did about 200, 300. And it's slowly been climbing. So you have to give your business time. And, and I would say, you know, start off, read, read my three favorite books. We got Donnie. You guys were talking about cannabis earlier. He's saying uh, Illinois has some booth cannabis. Tax costs rise with THC percentages. Concentrates are <laughs> higher tax than flour. Mm. <laughs> They're still trying to dial it in over there, man. Like everywhere else. Not, no one has it perfect yet. We got the Pope um, table. Do you think 90s boxers were better than 70s? No. 90s boxers? Yeah. Well, they're two different eras, man. Just... They're two different eras, but training methods always evolve and get better. You hope. I mean? We hope. Yeah. We hope. A lot well, of these guys do so much dodging and, and yeah, and yeah. Well, those dudes too. The, 70s and the fights though, are so man. organized now that 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 it's a little rough, man. Those to, dudes to in judge. the seventies, they they were very they were pretty gritty, but they didn't have the you training know, methods yeah. that these guys do now. Like what's yeah. available to them, like we were talking about earlier. You know, ways to better your yeah your health and and you know if you're if you're working out, there's different methods of working out that exist now that people weren't on to before the yeah. trunk the like, trunks was definitely different <clears throat> back yeah then. Like, <laughs> you sure. could imagine like muhammad ali on today's uh, uh method of uh, routine or something like that oh he would have been crazy or george foreman or something <laughs> or yeah so, something else to watch we got to ask a bum again saying send thank you so much appreciate you and we got a hybrid cypher saying kentucky fried movie Cheap, fast, and nasty. Five stars. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty trippy movie. All right. We got Dollar Bill saying, uh, yo, peace and love to all of you guys. Can we please get Paulina Alexis from Res Dogs on the show? We will try. I believe that's the second time you asked that. We're going to definitely try and get that off. Bring it. We got C-Minus Fan 4 rating us with a party of 30. <laughs> Salute. We got Naomi asking uh, Freeway Rick Ross, what is the most memorable moment of your success this far? Wow. Walking out of prison. Yeah. 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 (laughs) What was the first thing you did when you walked out? What you do? It's a motel. Motel? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, baby. You got somebody waiting for you? (laughs) Oh. Yeah, yeah. First thing I did, like... Ah, uh, hold that bus. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. It's only right. It's only right. <laughs> yeah, they dropped us off at the bus station. You know, they, they have like a, um, a van that takes you from the pen to the bus station. Mm-hmm. He dropped me off at the bus station. I just, whoop, jumped across the street, went right to the motel. <laughs> Let's That's get it on. Word. Ooh. So there's no obligation. I mean, you're free at that point. You don't have to get on no damn bus. You could just go anywhere you want. Oh, no. No, I had to get on that bus. Oh, no shit. But I was going to take a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it took about three minutes. You know. <laughs> at that point, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Bullet. <Ping>. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the wild party lasts, you know, like a couple hours, but... The, <laughs> hey, cut it. hey, when you're fresh out, man, you know, hey, things go happen. Yeah. All right. We got the Gooch, the last one so far, saying, can't wait for Dr. Green Thumbs to come to Fresno. I need those flavors, B. I believe uh, that's one of the next locations uh, that is being worked on currently. So, you know, hopefully this year we'll get that one open. And, uh, yeah, we'll come to Fresno. And uh, we want to thank everybody for getting down with us. We know more come as we go, and we still got a few minutes and all that. But, uh, yeah, make sure you check out the mix show after this. Uh, it's real psycho. Psycho less and myself. We're going to pop it off on the turntables for you. Uh, if you want to uh, take time and subject, su- uh, suggest some songs in the mix, we might pay attention to that, you know, if you put it in. You know the asylum or the psycho ward. We'll we'll take a look at some of the suggestions, but uh, you know we also have that yacht hop 
playlist uh, coming pretty soon. Have you have you heard of this? Yeah, I know what you guys are doing. Do Do you got any? I mean, you pretty suggestions much, for the yacht hop. Most playlist? of them are on the list already, right? Like, uh, you know the Christopher Cross. No, there's no Christopher Cross. This is it, it's it's hip hop. Check this out. Wait, wait, let, wait, let me you... let me see if you get down with this, right? There's hardcore hip hop songs as we know, right? We call that mostly street, street, um, or grimy, whatever. You know what I mean? But there's also the easy easy listening hip hop. Right or rap, and there are are groups that you know come from different parts of it that have at least one song or two that could go into the yacht hop category. You ever heard of yacht rock? Mm-mm. Okay, nope. well it's easy easy listening music okay. like rock music or like I was whatever. saying, Christopher the stuff Cross I listen stuff. to. Yeah, sailing. You know, like crap. <laughs> well, well, why did I do that? Why I did I do that? Oh, you do it. So, do to, it. so yeah. to give an example, so to give an example, the easy, the I keep saying easy, easy listening of hip hop or rap music would be like, let's just say, um, uh, PM Dawn or Diggable Planets. Not even Diggable Planets. They may have one song in this category, but like a PM Dawn, where it's easy. Now throughout. The course of hip hop music, there are songs that are like dope, but they fall into that category. You know what I mean? And we're making a playlist for that, so make sure you check that out. Soft rock, song. check it out, like, mm-hmm. yeah, soft top. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it's dope, it's just you know easy to listen to. It's not gritty, grimy. Yeah, I street. thought you were gonna do a yacht rock mix today or something. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> With no. your little skipper hat. He's, yeah, they're not in their boats today. It's the weather's a foul. Son. No sailing today. No sailing today. You might drift off on a three-hour tour. You know what I'm saying. I see what you did there. I try. <laughs> uh, so once again, we want to thank everybody out there for getting down with us on the daily. And if you're new to it today, you know what I'm saying. Make sure you um, get down with our community here at Be Real TV, the Doctor Green Thumb Show. We want to thank my friend. The legendary Freeway Ricky Ross for sitting at the table once again. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy Thank birthday. You. Congratulations. Thank y'all for having me. Thank y'all for having me. Many more, many more. Let them know where to find you. Oh, you can get me at Freeway Rick on Instagram, Freeway Ricky Ross on Facebook. But if you want to come and see me, I'm going to be at 9074 D E G A R M O, Sun Valley, California, from 8 in the morning to 10 at night. Most days. Word up. Psycho Leasy. Uh, I want to shout out everybody on the chat hanging out with us. Ricky for coming through. Ricky Ross, the original, the real. Uh, shout out to the Dr. Green Thumb Squad. If you're on that IG, follow me, Psycho Less Official. And if you're checking for the merch, go to the PsychoLessShop.com. Yeah. Oh. We got a hybrid cipher up in here saying Peace Send, Trace, Ricky, Freeway, and Rick Ross name. He's saying uh, Marbell saying Colton, read my super chat. So Marbell saying Azucar, Colton, Lee, Un, Libro, Un, Libro, Scene, Photos. No. <laughs> what? No. Que machetera. That was a butchering right there, son. Woo! <laughs> no, I wasn't going to read that Nyo. right. <laughs> All right, let's start from the very beginning. Azucar. 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 You still can't roll that R. My God. All right, next. Colton, Lee, Un. Le, Un. Le, Un. Right? Libro. Le, Le, E. Le, E. Un libro. Le, E, Un libro. Right. Un libro. Un libro. Sin photos. Sin photos. Sin photos. You know what he's saying? You got to read a book and not one with pictures, (laughs) Bolton. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I did that in the uh, Spanish to English translation. Yeah. uh, We still got to bring that book. Sorry. And uh, we got Psycho Beta Beatdown saying salute to the table. Shout out to the real Rick Ross. Congrats on the dispensary. Big Texas's birthday wish, albeit early, my brother. No boof. Moment of real psycho, please. And put Send Dog in the mix, B. Oh, you want Send Dog in the mix? All right, cool. I got you. I could do that. All right. And uh, what up, Trace? What's going on? I don't even know how to follow that up, but uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, you guys. It's always fun coming in here on a Tuesday afternoon. 
Um, when I heard Freeway, uh, Rick was going to be in here today, I was like, ah, man, it's always fun when you come in here to hang out because you always got something new going on. And sure enough, dispensary opening on Friday. Yes, yes. That's dope. Um, you. All you guys around the table, everybody up in the control room, everybody out in the, the front office here at Be Real uh, Studios, thank you very much for always uh, making me feel welcome down here. All the Instagram followers out there as well, at Trace Nunes, you can give me a follow there. Send dog. Just a shout out to that kid from uh, the sushi spot in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> the sushi. That I was an asshole too. Hey, man, peace. <laughs> hey, that's dope, hey, man. Word. Yeah. You made his day. Yeah, yeah man. Hey. The kid's probably smiling like crazy right now. Yeah. Man, Sin, just apologize to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, on the straight, on the straight. Yeah, that's dope. <clears throat> you can always flip it around. Things aren't going straight. Um, you need a change. It's all about what you have in your, your mind and what you put work to. So believe that you can change your situation. Swallow that.